if you claim to be a humanitarian, you should not celebrate Thanksgiving. In 1637, near present day, Groton, Connecticut, over 700 men, women, and children of the Pequot tribe had gathered for their annual green corn festival, which is our Thanksgiving celebration. In the pre-dawn hours, the sleeping Indians were surrounded by the English and Dutch mercenaries, who ordered them to come outside. Those who came out were shot or clubbed to death, while terrified women and children who huddled inside the longhouse were burned alive. The next day, the governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony declared a day of thanksgiving because 700 unarmed men, women, and children had been murdered. Cheered by their victory, the brave colonists and their Indian allies attacked village after village. Women and children over 14 were sold into slavery while the rest were murdered. Boats loaded with as many as 500 slaves regularly left the ports of New England. Bounties were paid for Indian scalps to encourage as many deaths as possible. Following an especially successful raid against the quote in what is now Stamford, Connecticut, the churches announced a second day of Thanksgiving to celebrate a victory over the heathen savages. During the feasting, the hacked off heads of the natives were kicked through the streets like soccer balls. So we should not be celebrating these holidays, especially Thanksgiving. As Thanksgiving is a celebration of the victory over our African and Native American ancestors. Yes, you heard right. So no African should be celebrating Thanksgiving on the same day that the European celebrates Thanksgiving. No so-called African American or Black American should be celebrating Thanksgiving on the same day that the European celebrates Thanksgiving. Native Americans damn sure shouldn't be celebrating Thanksgiving on the same day that the white man celebrates Thanksgiving. A lot of Africans are going to bankrupt yourselves uh, uh, during this process now. I've read some place where uh, uh, people on average would spend from one to two thousand dollars just on the holidays alone and that uh, so another place I, I read that somebody people will spend a quarter of their income it's a it's a false a hollow holiday that's been created for the purpose of one stealing your money that's one of the reasons that the holiday is there but another thing is that it helps to consolidate the identity of people in this country and in the white world Things that help to consolidate your identity with the white world uh, because it is a holiday that's a, among all the other kinds of holidays that white people uh, 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 experience and share and celebrate. It is one of those holidays that constitutes the national identity of white people. Yeah. In the absence of having your own philosophy, your own identity, or even being able to uh, know who the hell you are, then you end up celebrating your oppression. You end up celebrating your own bad treatment. That's a problem. The white man is celebrating his destruction of you. He's celebrating his ascent while at the same time celebrating your descent. All right? He's celebrating the building of his civilization while at the same time celebrating the destruction of black civilization, as Dr. Chancellor Williams says. But never in the history of the world have I ever heard of a people celebrating the victory of their enemies over them. Do you get my point here? They may remember that, but they will not celebrate it. The only people I know now presently in the world is the Negro and other people who are mentally subjugated by white supremacist uh, 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 culture around the world that celebrate their enemies' defeat of them. So when we study European holidays, we have to ask whose victory are we celebrating? 
want to get along with the white man at the expense of our loved ones. At the expense of our own family, our own children. We'll get along with the white man by any means necessary. Even if that means us participating in our own destruction. Celebrating our own destruction. Does that really make sense to you? Like, why are you getting so emotional? Don't you think I have the right to be emotional? Not that it's the emotion that is causing me to say what I'm saying. What I'm saying is really quite logical. And you consider yourself educated. You should understand what I'm saying. But because you have this emotional attachment to your bitter enemy. And no, we're not just saying that that is your bitter enemy. We keep bringing facts, historical facts, ancient historical facts, and recent historical facts to you. And you say, and you will continue to say, well, see, that's just an isolated incident. We can't, we can't <laughs> deal with them based on that one isolated incident. It's because you keep forgetting. Look, if you want to be a good Christian, a good Muslim, <laughs> or one of these other religious folks, uh, look, I'm not going to make fun of your religion right now. If you want to be morally good, as you would call it, and you want to forgive the white man for his many crimes, not just against humanity, but against nature itself, against life itself, Go ahead and forgive the white man. But for you to say that it's wise for us to forget is for you to be a goddamn fool. If I break in your car one time, then you're going to exercise all types of security measures to prevent me from doing it again. But when it comes to the white man, you are forgiving. And not only forgiving, you are forgetful. And he continues to do the same thing really day in and day out. But you don't find out about it until five or six years later, ten years later. And then by the time you find out about what he did ten years ago, he had another decade of crimes that you're not going to find out about until ten years in the future. But no matter how many crimes he perpetrates against our people, you'll tell us, your people, those that really love you and care about you. Come on, man, you're being ridiculous. See any time that we forget about that stuff, and that brings me to another uh, topic. When we say Black Holocaust, because you ain't studied no history, you assume we talk. You assume that we're talking about. Slavery that you claim was over in 1865. But we're not talking about no slavery that ended 150 years ago. We're talking about slavery that is still happening today. Just the fact that you're going to celebrate Thanksgiving in 2014 on the same day. That the destroyers of your people celebrate Thanksgiving. It's telling you that you're still a slave. Because the slaves celebrated when the slave master celebrated. Because that was the only day that the slave master gave off. So of course the slaves celebrated on the day that the slave master gave them off. But you're supposed to be free, right? Slavery was in the past, right? Well, why don't you give thanks to your creator or your God or nature or whatever you're giving thanks to on a day that you choose? Instead, you still celebrate the white man's victory over our ancestors when the white man celebrates. And then you have the nerve to say that you're not a slave. 
you have the nerve to say that we're being unreasonable. That we are being emotional. No, you are being emotional. Because you refuse to give up your emotional attachment to the enemy of not only the black man, black woman, the indigenous people of the planet Earth. You refuse to give up your emotional attachment to the enemy of nature and life itself. You need to think about that. The second premise, the celebration of holidays establishes and helps to maintain a strong emotional and cultural bond between you and that which you are celebrating. A strong emotional and cultural bond between you and that which you are celebrating. Anything that you jump up and down and sing about and dance about long enough becomes very much a part of your being and you feel something for that because it brought you joy at the time that you were doing it. So you have an emotional and a cultural bond and connection with it. The question arises, when we celebrate European holidays, what are we binding ourselves to? Join us. If not this year, then next year. Build up. Work your way up to it. But don't just make up in your mind that you're going to continue to celebrate the white man's victory over the indigenous people of the earth. Don't settle on that. Make up in your mind today that while you're celebrating Thanksgiving, the murder of our ancestors, the murder of our African ancestors, the murder of our Native American ancestors. While you're celebrating Thanksgiving on the day that the white man sets aside to celebrate the murder of our ancestors. Be thinking of a way that sometime in the future you'll have a paradigm shift. And you will begin to give thanks on any other day but the day that the white man celebrates his defeat of our ancestors. This has been Daku Akabo Wakatu. Even the friendly Wampanoag did not escape the madness. Their chief was beheaded and his head impaled on a pole in Plymouth, Massachusetts, where it remained on display for 24 years. The killings became more and more frenzied, with days of Thanksgiving feast being held after each successful massacre. George Washington finally suggested that only one day of Thanksgiving per year be set aside of celebrating each and every massacre. Later, Abraham Lincoln decreed Thanksgiving Day to be a national legal holiday during the Civil War. On the same day, he ordered troops to march against the starving Sioux in Minnesota. Uh, that prolific historian and writer, Professor Joel A. Rogers here. And he says that the early American whites were cruel. Connecticut whites massacred the Pequot Indians. Infants were torn from their mother's breast and hacked to pieces. The heads of the parents were chopped off and kicked about in the streets, maybe where the Thanksgiving Thursday football game comes from. Governor Bradford wrote, It was a fearful sight to see them frying in the fire and streams of blood quenching the same and terrible was the stench and the stink thereof. But the victory seemed a sweet sacrifice and they, the whites, gave praise thereof to God. I don't think I need to say any more about it in this given day now. That was enough for me.